All right, I'm gonna share with you guys how to make a two-handed spring joint. And before we get into it, what I mean by that is a spring joint that you can switch between your hands or put in the middle of them, right? So an important idea to get across first and foremost is the idea of what a spring joint is, okay? So a spring joint is a unity component that acts like a spring. It's a physics object that acts like a spring. Right. And uh, I'm just going to make one really quick here so you can see. Um, and to make a spring joint, um, I would recommend knowing how to make one before watching this video. But um, as a little refresher, to make a spring joint, you add a spring joint and a rigid body to the object. And for VR chat's way, you turn off gravity and turn on drag and zero on your angular drag. And you lock the rotation axes. And then you go to your wrist. If I get to it, go to your wrist. And you want to add a rigid body to it with the same settings. One, one, zero, no gravity. Except now you want to turn on all of the constraints. And then you take your sphere and you take the wrist that you just created the rigid body on and you drag it into the connected body. Now, if I go into play mode and move the armature around, you can see that the spring joint acts like a spring joint now. Okay. So basically all it is, is a rigid body that is locked to your right wrist. So this is an important idea. The rigid body is a child of your right wrist and the spring joint is using that child as its connected body, as its target to figure out where it's going to move and how it's going to move. Okay. So a couple terms are super important there. Um, one is child and the other one is spring joint. So basically, um, as I said, you put a rigid body on your right wrist and that makes it a child. Now you can't move the rigid body from your right wrist to your left wrist. That's not how it works. So if you want to make a two handed spring joint, you can't just make two rigid bodies or you can't just take the rigid body on your right wrist and move it to your left wrist somehow. That's just not how the system works. However, there is a component in the game called a parent constraint that I can add. Uh, I don't know why I deleted this fear originally, but I can add a parent constraint. And what a parent constraint is going to do is it's going to pretend like whatever object it's attached to is child of the targets in the sources list. So if I add a source to the right wrist and then click the activate button, if I go into play mode, you can see that the sphere is not underneath the right wrist. It's at the base of the hierarchy. But if I move my right wrist, you're going to see the sphere is going to follow my right wrist. So it's pretending like it's a child of my right wrist. Okay. Now we can do the same thing. We can add another motion and then put left wrist in here this time. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. So you put left wrist in here. And then if I hit the play button, you can see if I move my right wrist, it's going to move, but it's not going to move as much. And if I move my left wrist, it's going to move the other way, but not a hundred percent. That's because the weight on both of these is one, the weight of the, um, the weight of the, the constraint, right? So basically the parent constraint is going to say, okay, I want you to take uh, zero to one. So, 0% to 100%, I want you to take that percentage of movement from this source and apply it to, you know, the sphere, right? And the same with the left wrist. And because we have 100% on each one, it's going to stay in between directly in the middle of them. So if I take my right wrist and move it here, then move it here, you can see if I take my left wrist and do the same thing, move it here, you're going to see for the most part, I didn't get the positioning right perfect, but for the most part, uh, the ball is in between the hands. So if I kind of even them up here, you see the ball stays in between the hands, right? It's moving 50% with the left and then 50% with the right. Now, um, subsequently with that logic, I can say, okay, if I wanted to follow the right wrist 100%, I turn left wrist weight to zero, and then it's going to follow the right wrist. And if I wanted to follow the left wrist, 
I can turn right wrist weight to zero and it's going to follow the right wrist now, right? So just to prove if I, so it's on the right wrist now, if I, or left wrist, if I take the left wrist and move it, it's going to follow it hundred percent. And if I go and turn it to the right wrist, and then I move my right wrist, it's going to move hundred percent over here too. So you can kind of see where we might be going with this. You can make an object act like it's a child of another object with these parent constraints, right? And this is how we get around the issue of not being able to move the rigid body around. We put a rigid body on this, this sphere, or rather this object with the constraint, and then we can all of a sudden move a rigid body around, right? So I'll keep this as a placeholder. And then I'm going to create a new empty. Uh, actually, no, let me create a new 3D object. We're going to make this one a plane, not a plane, a uh, cube. So it's a little easier to visualize the difference. I'm going to zero it. And I'm going to make this the spring joint. So I'm going to remove a component. I'm going to add the spring joint to this, right? I'm going to set up the settings as they should be. I'm just going to do this really quick because I already explained it. And then I'm going to add a rigid body to this object with the parent constraint on it. And I'm going to lock all of the axes and set those settings back to where they should be. So now I drag the sphere into the connected body. And now basically we have a spring joint set up, but it's dynamic. So the, the rigid body target is on this sphere, which, as you saw before, the sphere can move from hand to hand based off of the weight that I set for each of these motions in the parent constraint. So you can see the spring joint is here. If I take my left wrist and move it around, you can see the spring joint is moving with it, right? It's moving around the connected body. Now, if I take this sphere or the target and I set the right wrist to one, you can see now it's in the middle and the cube is now reacting to that. So now if I turn this off, see it's moving over here now. So all we're doing with this entire system is taking a, um, a rigid body and manipulating it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set up the uh, spring joint to switch hands properly. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, delete this and we're just going to remake it. So I'm going to create an empty. We're going to call this the um, spring joint container. I like using uh, like parent, like uh, parent containers and stuff to make things easier to understand. And then I'm going to create an empty under here. We're going to call this the physics, um, actually physics constraints. And then I'm going to create a new 3D object sphere. Um, and this is going to be our spring joint. So I'm going to scale it down a little bit. And I'm going to move this into position where I like it up here. Looks good. And then I'm going to go to physics constraints. I'm going to add a rigid body to this. I'm going to set the settings up. Mass and drag 1, angular drag 0, no gravity, and locking all of the axes and then I'm going to add the parent constraint like we had before and I'm going to add the two motions so this is where we deviate a little bit okay so on a regular spring joint you just set the position of the spring joint by moving the uh, spring joint around and putting it over here right where you want it to be so you can do that um, but personally I like to add two new empties one for left wrist duplicate it and then one for right wrist and then I like to take these two I'm going to zero the positions by going to the top of the inspector after clicking on them and hitting zero 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 I'm going to go to the front view I'm going to take the right wrist and drag it up to the right wrist I'm going to take the left wrist and I'm going to drag it up to the left wrist these are going to act as our positions for our um, parent targets or parent constraint target so now I take this physics constraint, I drag the right wrist into the first one, and then the left wrist into the second one. 
I set the left wrist's weight to zero because we wanted to start out on our right wrist and I'm going to hit zero. And that's going to put the physics constraints object directly onto the position we put the right wrist. We put it on the right wrist. Now, I need to take the right wrist and I need to drag it underneath my right wrist in my hierarchy. And then I need to do the same with the left wrist that we just made. Okay. So we go back to the sphere and we want to remove the sphere collider and we want to add a spring joint. And then we want to set it up like we did before mass and drag one angular drag zero, no gravity, and then lock rotation axes. And then what you want to do is you want to take the physics constraints object and drag it into the connected body. And then I'm just going to rename this spring joint instead of sphere, just so it's a little bit more easy to understand. And that should it that should be it. Um, there is a chance that I might have uh, messed up the positioning, but I don't think I did. Let me just check. So if I move the armature around, yeah, we look good. If I move the armature around, you can see the spring joint follows here as you would expect it to. Now, I'm just going to rotate the shoulders around so that way you can see this a little bit better so now you can see that it is on my right wrist so i'm going to add just some you don't need to do this step this is just so you can visualize what's happening here this is going to act as our target because it's underneath the physics constraints object that has the parent constraints on it it's going to move when we modulate the weight of the physics constraints. So basically this is just going to act like a visualizer. Don't worry about the terminology too much. So you can see the, the constraint is on my right wrist and the spring joint is targeting that right wrist right now. Okay. So if I click on the constraint and I set the left wrist's weight to one, you can see that this ball, the position of the constraint moves to the middle of the, in, of your hands. Right. And then if I turn the right wrist's weight to zero, you can see it moves back to your left hand. And I can go back to the center and to the right or yeah, and that's it. And then zeroing it out, puts it back to the start. So that's the way the entire system works. It just uses a parent constraint that moves a rigid body around because that's the only way to move rigid bodies. Um, so now we're just going to set up the animations for it. Um, it's honestly pretty simple there's not a whole lot of logic to it um but we're just going to set it up so i'm going to click on my avatar i need to actually drag the spring joint container underneath my avatar i hadn't done that yet so i'm going to click on my avatar i'm going to go to the animation tab and hit create then i'm going to just put this in one of my folders here i'm going to call this on right i'm going to hit the record button and we're going to toggle the spring joint on. We're going to go to physics constraints. We're going to turn right wrist's weight to one and left wrist weight to zero because we want it to be 100% weighted to your right wrist, meaning it, we want to follow the right wrist of your uh, <laughs> the movement of your right wrist perfectly, 100%. So we take this frame, we drag it over one and copy paste it. So we have the two frames of the exact same. And then we want to create another one. We'll do on left and then we paste what we just did. And then this time you're going to change the, the second one to one and the first one to zero for a better visualization. I'm just going to go over here, turn left wrist to one and right wrist to zero. Now it's going to move over to the left wrist. Now we're going to create a new one called on center. And we're going to paste that in and we're just going to change the weight of the second one to one as well. So if we go into the, the spring joint container and you see the weight over here is one and one, just like we set it over here and the target is in the middle of your hands. So we can drag this over one and copy paste, make sure they're the same frame. And now we're just going to create an animation called off. Oops, that's a YouTube link off. And then we paste what we just did in and we simply turn the spring joint off. That's it. So now we need to set up the logic for it. So I'm going to go to the layer that was created when I added the animation. I'm just going to rename it to effects. And then I'm going to go to the animator tab and I'm going to just drag these out. So they're a little bit cleaner and we want it to be off when we spawn in. You just get these out of your way. 
you want it to be off when you spawn in. So you want to click on off and then set as the layer default state. And then we want to drag these up. I like to do right, center, left, just for my brain's sake. And then I'm going to make a transition from any state to each of these. And then I'm going to go to the parameters and I'm going to add an integer for gesture left and then gesture right. So there's a good chance that you already have these variables on your layer. I created an entirely new one, so I don't have them yet, but I'm going to add another bool for SJ enabled spring joint enabled. Then I'm going to click on the transition from any state to off. I'm going to go to the settings. Make sure exit time is unchecked and transition duration is zero. And I'm going to add a condition and I'm going to say SJ enabled is false. So SJ enabled is going to be the bool that you manipulate on your menu. SJ enabled is false is going to, um, this is going to evaluate when you turn off the spring joint. Okay. And now it's going to force the off state regardless of any other logic. Okay. So I'm going to right click up here and copy transition parameters. Then I'm going to click on the transition from any state to on right and paste both on the top here in the inspector. And then I want to change SJ enabled to true. And then I want to add two new controls, two new conditions. And I'm going to click on gesture left and I'm going to change it to gesture right. I'm going to say gesture right equals three. Okay. Three is finger point. And then I'm going to do gesture left not equals three because we want this uh, ball to spawn in on your right hand if you're pointing with your right hand and you're not pointing with your left hand. So I'm going to copy these transition parameters again and I'm going to paste them into center. Now I'm going to change gesture left from not equal three to equals three. So this means we want the center animation to play when we have both of our left and right hands pointing. Okay. So we're going to go to on left and we're going to go up here and paste both again. And we're going to say gesture right not equals three and gesture left equals three. So because it's on our left hand, we want uh, to be not pointing with our right hand and then pointing with our left hand. Okay. And that's all the logic. So if I hit the play button, uh, you can see the wall's not there. If I hit SJ enabled, and then I do gesture right equals three, you can see the ball spawns. And then if I do gesture left equals three, it's going to move like this. Now, I believe my rigid body target is off. So I'm going to go check that really quick. Um, let me see if I click on the spring joint. It looks like the connected anchor might be off. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, I found the issue here. I needed to uncheck auto configure connected anchor. That's why it wasn't working uh, properly when I was sitting still. Okay. I went in and added a uh, animation a walking animation in here to make this a little bit easier to see. So then if I throw this on my avatar, I go to parameters, I do gesture right equals three and SJ enabled is true. You can see that now it's following my right wrist. And then if I do gesture left equals three, it's going to be in between my hands. And then if I do gesture left, uh, gesture left equals three and gesture right equals zero, it's going to follow the other wrist. And then if I turn it off, it's going to disappear. And it's going to come back just like we wanted to. So that's the entire system set up. Uh, you'll need to add SJ enabled as a bool to your avatars uh, menu, uh, your expressions menu and parameters, and it will work just as you expect. Just add a toggle as well, and you should be good to go. If you have any questions, uh, you can join my discords down in the bottom. I answer questions all the time. So just reach out if you need it. All right, guys.